Okay, I just want to read uh, two verses before we start. One is from Proverbs 22, and verse 1, and it says, A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, loving favor than silver and gold. Okay, a good name um, is to be chosen rather than great riches, and loving favor than silver or gold. Um, so it talks about a good name, meaning a good testimony or a good reputation, right? And that's far more valuable, uh, uh, right? Proverbs is saying it's far more valuable than great riches, than material riches, and so on, right? Um, and um, then we see something in, in the book of Revelation, um, Revelation chapter 3, where um, this is to the church in Sardis, the message which goes out. Um, this is verse 1, okay? Uh, these things says he, who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Okay, so it's talking about a name. Um, both these verses talk about a name, a testimony, and a reputation. Okay, um, and definitely it is it is something that is valuable, as we see in Proverbs, that it's uh, something that's required, you know, and especially as a follower of Christ. Uh, something that we need, but it's here, Revelation 3 and verse 1 talks about a, a true evaluation or a true reputation, okay? Like one can have a reputation and a name, and what is a reputation? It's something that someone thinks of us, yeah, it could be honor, it could be, it could be, uh, you know, something, a popularity, fame, whatever, something that uh, an understanding that someone else has about you, right? That is the reputation. Okay, he has a reputation for being, you know, kind. One has a reputation for being, you know, angry, or you know, it could be anything, right? Any attribute. So they have a reputation, which means something that you know these people, uh, you know, one lives consistently or displays consistently. So they have a reputation. Okay. Now here in this verse, we have, you know, God is saying you have a reputation, right? So maybe a good name, maybe, a, you know, uh, that this is great, this is fantastic, whatever, you know, it's talking about collectively a group of people. You have a reputation. What is the reputation? That you are, that you are alive. That you have a reputation. People are watching and saying, wow, this is fantastic. This is awesome. But you are dead. So, the true reputation is always something that comes from God. Okay, true evaluation, true assessment of our condition, of our state, is something that comes from God. And that is something that is to be chosen. Now, that is something that we need to pursue. That is to be esteemed above everything else. Right? So, uh, as we pray, we just pray, Lord, uh, I, I just want to have a correct evaluation a correct assessment of myself, right? Not based on who people say I am, who people think I am, or sometimes, you know, we can just be swayed by that. But Lord, what you say or who you say that we are, right? that is a true assessment of ourselves, right? Okay, so let's pray. Father, we, we thank you, Lord, that um, you're the one who was full of grace and full of truth. Lord, I thank you that Grace and truth come together, Lord, in in who you are and uh, what you speak. And Lord, this morning I pray that you will pronounce over us grace and truth, Father God. A true evaluation, a true assessment, Lord, of, of who we are. Lord, our reputation could be so different based on people's assessments, but Lord, you know us. And Lord, I pray that... Um, let grace and mercy, grace and truth, Lord, um, be extended today. Let it be poured out on each one of us today, Father God. And even as you, Lord, see us, even, even as you speak, Lord, and declare and pronounce who we are, God, we know that it is a redemptive thing, God. When you say that we, have, we are not measuring up, we know it is redemptive. It's not to break break us, Lord. When we, and when we say we're good and faithful, Lord, we know it is so that we can go further, God. So I pray that let your pronouncement of grace and mercy, Lord, 
be upon us today, Father God. Spirit of God, speak to us in the inner man. Write your word upon our hearts. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to share the notes. and uh, So, Christian leadership, where did we stop last time? I think we stopped at... Um, uh, trans transition, like right? during a challenging. Oh, we finished that. Okay, we were looking at efficiency, efficiency and uh, productivity. Okay, so uh, some of the practical things, right? How can I be even more productive? And the and the whole thing uh, premise for that is what we see in John 15, where the Lord is looking for fruit. The Lord is looking for productivity, right? That your that our lives will be fruitful, productive. Okay, and that we will be efficient in whatever we do. Okay, so um, we looked at that time box and, uh, you know, that 18-minute uh, to-do list, Peter Bregman. The template is also there in this, you know, in the uh, course material, resource material section. So you can check that out. Um, uh, E-learning students, it will be uploaded. It's not yet uploaded. Uh, it will be uploaded when you watch this video, right? Okay. Okay, so um, continuing with some of the practical things, we said you know the fourth one that we see is that uh, do the most important work during the best working hours. Now, the most important work is something that we assign importance or prioritize, right? It is something that is critical. Okay, now it need not be always urgent. Okay, sometimes we think okay, urgent work is the most important work. Right? It need not be. Right? Uh, the most important work is something that is critical and not doing it will have bad consequences. Okay, So uh, do the most important work. The most important work need not be something that you greatly enjoy. You know, in every, in every uh, like even in ministry, we have certain things that we need to do. Maybe it's communication, maybe it's report, maybe it's, you know, that, that's not ex as exciting. Right, uh, exciting things could be okay. You know, sharing the word and ministering and leading worship and all that. But we have other things which need to be done. The administrative side of it, organizational side of it, which may or may not be exciting to you, right? But it's important. And leaving that undone will have consequences, bad consequences, right? So do it during the best working hour. What is the best working hour when we are? alert when we have energy right when we are mind is sharp okay? so do it when, when our when our you know decision making is clear uh, do it during the best work uh, working hours okay then um, important work challenging work okay both I'm just putting it together okay the, the sixth one is you do what you do best okay so which means that um, you know, not everybody is skilled at everything. Yes or no? Yeah. So we have certain skills. We have certain strengths. Right? And when we look around, maybe we look at the team and we see that others have some other things that they are, you know, they are skilled with, they are gifted with. So what are the things that you need to do that only you can do right? in church, in ministry, right, in, in the team? You do it. Right, you you don't compromise on that. Right, that's the thing that you're skilled for, gifted for, uh, you're called to, and that's your primary role and responsibility. Do it. Right, but what are the other things that you can delegate to others? What does delegate mean? Sorry, assign, assign hand hand over. Right, the, those tasks which others can do it, which others are skilled. Right, so it'll be an opportunity for them, and uh, so you can actually delegate that. Right, so um, now the challenge is okay when we know that okay, this is not my strength at all. It's easy to delegate, saying, hey, "Please, you know, do this, get this done." But when you, let's say, you are skilled in multiple things, and that's when the tendency is to okay, let me try and do it all. Right, I'll do this, I'll do that. Also, let me. Now we realize that we have only so much time and only so much we can actually put our full efforts into, right, uh, within that time. 
so we need to decide okay what is it that i can delegate handover okay rest and refresh exercise um for personal um, you know uh, and that's the next one personal strength but for increased efficiency rest and re refreshing is always required we cannot function like a machine right we our mind needs rest our body needs rest and we can be refreshed when we refreshed when we are refreshed we can actually look at uh, the challenges or problems that need to be solved we can look at it, look at it with renewed strength and we look at it in a in a fresh manner you know sometimes you just say okay i'll i'll decide in the morning right just need to rest let me not think about it or try and solve it now because the body needs rest the mind is rest and though that's the perfect time to make mistakes right so you can rest and then be refreshed and uh, do it right uh, exercise in order to increase efficiency exercise goes physically um you know increase our strength and it it affects us you know we are we are interconnected spirit soul and body right so when we are physically at a good place it affects us emotionally and spiritually as well okay right okay maintaining personal strength physically spiritually it's important for us to stay renewed okay it's our responsibility nobody will do it for us okay so um, we might have bigger challenges bigger tasks etc but we need to make sure that we are renewed spiritually okay um, and renewal happens in the presence of god isaiah 40 talks about that um isaiah 30 also 15 in returning and rest you shall be saved in quietness and confidence shall be your strength okay so um you know just like this morning during the mentoring hour what we looked at you know we need to renew ourselves and and do that first thing what really matters in order to you know that's the main thing right uh, we can because in the business of it we can actually get into the details of the task details of the work and lose sight of why we are doing who we are doing it for right and uh, we need to be spiritually renewed to keep that uh, going okay keep learning keep growing you know listen to sermons read books okay so that's another thing um, you know when we are in a student mode or student kind of a season it's easier to do this but when we are in a ministry or a working professional kind of a season role then again we need to you know intentionally do this okay um, to to keep learning and keep growing no matter what season of life you know we are in to be curious to be interested to learn okay um because when we stop learning when we stop reading you know then we stop growing right um so so that's the thing if you look at children children are very interested right very curious uh, and i and i remember you know being a you know being like that asking what is that why is this you know uh, to all the grown ups around you know why is this but then over a period of time we just stopped right we stopped maybe thinking okay maybe this is a dumb question <laughs> you know what will they think of me if i ask this question and we stop uh, of course we don't have to necessarily ask people but we can actually find out check right uh, yeah and uh, find out on the online you know what is it you know we can always do that right so there's so much we can learn and we can grow okay uh, again uh, just to repeat take time to exercise rest uh, be thankful for everything that the lord has done you know it's uh, when we especially when we look at okay the bigness of the vision okay the size of the go or, or the extent to which we need to actually reach in order to achieve the goal um we can actually be very dissatisfied sometimes you know we go back home thinking okay i have 101 things to do more to do and i've only done so much right and be in a very in a place of dissatisfaction but um look at the lord has done how far the lord has brought brought you brought uh, maybe the team the ministry and be thankful for it right um and and keep the vision refreshed you know like we said vision when we talk about vision vision has this um 
you know, we are human and we have this capacity to forget. We have the capacity to be distracted. Right? So keep the vision refreshed, you know, revisit, go back. Maybe you've written down, um, you know, go back to it again. Okay. So that's about, um, uh, about keeping ourselves fresh, keeping our strength renewed. Um, so, you know, about the transition, you know, now at some time, at some point, we need to pass on, pass on the baton, you know. Baton is something that we, if you see a relay race, you know, that's that colorful thing which they, they use, you know, that's the baton. So it's passed on. So here it talks about responsibility. It talks, talks about uh, maybe the role, right? Um, so this is a quote from Pastor that we had, uh, Pastor Ashish, uh, heard many years ago. It says, your success in ministry is inc incomplete if you do not raise successors. Also, the day you begin is the day you should start planning your departure. Okay, so which which talks about raising leaders, um, and whatever God has put in you, okay, like and this is true of each and every individual. The Lord teaches, the Lord reveals, the Lord anoints, the Lord you know puts in our spirit, like wonderful things, and it's not just for our own consumption or for us to walk in, but it's also to be passed on. Right, it could be for family members, it could be for you know the team, right? But it needs to be passed on. Otherwise, it will stay locked in, and it will once you're gone, you know, it will just go with you, right? So, and and the Lord's thing is that He wants to pass on to others. Uh, we we see that over and over again, right? Um, like uh, Psalm 71, verse 17, the psalmist says, Lord, you have taught me from my youth, and to this day I declare your wondrous works, right? He's, uh, you know, he says, I'm old, I'm gray-headed, um, you know, don't forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation, okay? So to this generation, now the present generation, and he says, your power to everyone who is to come, you know, the next generation also, right? So which means that, um, you know, that we can intentionally, uh, you know, raise up leaders, uh, raise our path on what we have received to the next generation and to another generation, right? Um, whatever God has put in our hearts. And maybe God, you know, puts us in positions of leadership and ministry, what we have received to pass on that. Right? Um, uh, to, Paul, to Timothy, Paul says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 2, verses 1 and 2. And the things which you have heard from me. Okay. It's, it's Timothy's, Paul is a, again a previous generation, right? Heard from me among many witnesses. Come at these two faithful men who will be able to teach us also. So this, this thing of passing on um, is there. Uh, throughout, right? Okay. Um, sorry. Um, where, yeah, okay. And at the right, right time, you know, if you raised up leaders, you we can actually step aside and uh, not disconnect, but step aside so that they can do the work and we can provide insight and provide direction and so on okay okay so uh, lastly you know in this section one thing that we can do is have a plan for our lives okay so then say okay i'm i'm still waiting on god and god has to reveal god has to show me um he has to you know provide the details etc but we can actually sit with god and actually plan through okay uh, like we said planning is not unscriptural planning is good uh, and we think of planning when we think of you know maybe organizing something arranging a meeting you know uh, those things we think about planning finances and so on what about the plan for our lives or what about a life plan okay um, okay maybe right now you're in a certain uh, you know, season, meaning as a student, okay, I'm in a, as a student and in a season of life, and this is my age range, or this is the age that I'm in, 
Okay, so what is the plan for you know the next five years, the next ten years, the next fifteen years, the next twenty years? You know, um, is it okay to think like that, or not okay? What do you think? Huh? Is it okay to think? Yeah. Okay. So, so it, it doesn't you know like in James we see okay, woe to you. <laughs> saying okay uh, where is that uh, scripture we go to you know um so you know where um james talks about presumptuous you know he says okay the, you're saying okay the, we'll do this we'll do that and uh, um we're doing things presumptuously but uh, now, just looking at that verse, um, yeah, verse 13, chapter 4. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy, sell, and make a profit. And whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, but what is your life? Is it not even a vapor? which appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Okay, so then we read that and say, okay, no, no planning. <laughs> no more planning. I just look for the day, one day at a time, you know, that that famous song, One Day at a Time, Lord Jesus. Um, verse 15, it says, Instead, you ought to say, If the Lord wills, we shall live and do this. Okay, So, so the thing is that um, verse 16 is the thing that he's saying we should not do. Okay, he's not against planning or, you know, we should plan with God. We should plan, uh, you know, get his ideas, get his... Um, dreams for us. Definitely, that's the, the scriptural way to go about. Verse 16 says, uh, looking at James 4, verse 16, Now, you boast in your arrogance, and all such boasting is evil. So, definitely, you no, know, we're not boasting when we say, okay, five years from now, this is what I'd like to do, this is what I want to do. You know? So, boasting in arrogance is something that we want to definitely want to get into. But in humility, considering God, leaning on God, leaning on His wisdom, and planning out, right? it's definitely something that is something that we can do. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think the... Okay, Anand's question is, okay, or rather, not question, his remark is that we can't do it for our own whole life. Right. Okay. So the thing is this, you know, we can have an outline. We can have a plan. And, you know, for some people, God works things in, let's say, certain chunks of time, like maybe every, every uh, sorry. No, no, in the sense that God, you know, takes us through seasons and maybe there are some big changes which happen every maybe every six years or every four years, every five years, whatever, you know, some changes. So we can plan accordingly. Okay, let's say you've spent about three years here and, uh, you know, what is the what does the next three years look like? Right. Yeah, so the thing is, so, so the thing is to have a, okay, you have some dreams, you have some desires, right? Oh, okay, God, uh, you know, I think I want to do this, you know, maybe focus on, Work, ministry, whatever it is, and if God has spoken, you know, in terms of, uh, or God has, you know, gifted you, anointed you, and you feel that okay, I, I need, I need to do this, or you know, I need to learn, I need to study more, whatever it is. You know. But the thing is to actually sit and write it down, pray about it, write it down. Okay, next four years, this is what I'd like to do. Next, the four, the the years after that, this is what I'd like to do, and we can we can actually do it. You know, we can um, write down till, I don't know, you know, you just keep going, right? And the thing is that God will give you the insight. God will give us the, the input to fill in the details, okay? The thing is, when we sit with God, when we pray, sit with Him, and then, you know, fill this out, you know, or make that broad outline, you know, you, many times we see that, um, you know, that is what God is actually leading. And... The, the good thing about making an outline is like that, or a plan plan like that is that, you know, in that season, you can actually intentionally step into focus on certain things. Let's say now, you know, you've decided, okay, three years, uh, I'm going to do this course. So what, what happened? 
you know you're able to focus your energy plan and and, and then you yeah, you know everything into equipping like into learning this is what i'm going to do but what if we are saying okay i'm not sure i'm getting into this i'm not sure whether i should be doing this or that you know during this 3 4 years then we are not able to actually intentionally put our efforts right am i in the right place you know if you're going to be that you know definitely you know first year first few weeks or even first few months there might be a question you know am i in the right place am i doing the right thing you know all my friends are doing something else they are you know <laughs> maybe doing ms and what what not uh, you know am i in the right place you know and if i lose this period of time all these questions right but then god reassures my like god reaffirms right and then we 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 go on right so it's it's good to you know plan out okay uh and some suggestions are that we can actually do it for decades you know 10 years and so on or or a short a shorter frame of um, time right but it's good to do that okay so why don't we uh, take 5 minutes yeah okay question mm -hmm. change it yeah so yeah make it happen or also you know lord change it rearrange it so it's not a water tight thing exactly exactly yeah give me a uh, yeah you give me the desire give me the desire to you know confirm it give me the desire give me the um, and and god does that right and, and the lord um, he's the one who uh you know puts those seeds in our hearts you know if you can if you can think of you know those desires those things that uh, that keep growing like a plant you know it, god put those seeds in our heart at maybe an early age or maybe a few years ago and those things keep growing right uh let me just share um a sample okay of what we can look at um okay we okay, this is something that we studied on a sunday morning in church but i don't know if, if you guys were also there our students are also there okay so uh, i'll upload this also for us okay so purpose stages plans pursuits okay four four things what is the purpose okay so we write it it's going to take some time right uh stage plan and pursuit okay the columns are stage okay, what stage of life am i in okay um okay let's say if it's a, it's a age where it's 20s to 30s or even beyond that okay i'm growing okay i'm establishing something making firm something okay this is just an ex example uh, just an outline a suggestion right then plan you know grow in to the next level in all these in all these areas what are those areas okay that you want to step up to the next level what is that you want to establish pursuits okay we can break it down spiritual life personal life family children you know if you're married and uh, finances profession ministry if it's applicable okay so we can break it down Let's say and we can actually write down okay um maybe a good thing is to you know start by planning for the year right or maybe plan for the next year now now that we are already into the year we can pray i mean we can plan for the remainder of the year uh, or you know plan for the next year and say okay god this is something that i want to see okay now sometimes what happens is that um, yeah so uh, you know the thing is you listen to god right we we have all learned to you know hear god's voice uh, be mindful of you know how he leads us and so on you know, we've been learning that and and that's what we do right uh, training our spirit i think that whole thing of the human spirit is to train our spirit to receive from god right to be sensitive okay so 
so we do that you know we have you know leaning into god seeking him pursuing him and saying god what are you saying you know what is it that i can put down what is it that i that you want me to do now now it's it's important that we do that um because otherwise time can go by okay time can go by and we will just live you know according to the day whatever catches our attention whatever is urgent like we will just live it and suddenly we realize that okay time has gone by you know time just keeps flowing right but if we actually plan and say okay i want to intentionally pursue these things right however big however small it could be i want to intentionally pursue this i want to see this then there will be a sense of accomplishment right and you see that we are moving further into what god has for us okay so yeah so yeah so that's something any any questions or any thoughts right uh, and there's a few few th thoughts here about pursuing the purposes of god that we've already um you know something that's a reiteration of what we already know um so i just wanted to share that uh, i'll put this up again right okay working on a life plan right okay. no questions okay okay would you like to um maybe take five minutes to do it okay uh, maybe not uh you know i mean i leave it to you but then at least plan for let's look at uh, do you have something for for this year you have okay you already okay for the year okay so then why don't you look those of you who already you know put something up for this year why don't we look beyond that okay uh look beyond that beyond that year okay look beyond 2024 look at 2025 2026 2027 okay maybe sorry 25 also okay then you yeah is is already then you can actually take a break <laughs> take a coffee break <laughs> uh no actually uh, what, what you can do is look beyond that you know, 2024 25 is done maybe you know we can look at 26 and 27 you know uh um be all the uh, others also you know if, if you have don't have for this year then look at this year and look look at one more year okay and see okay what are some things that um what are my plans okay what is it that i want to be established in my life what are some things that i want to pursue break it down okay these are some goals that i want to see and and just you know let's take some time to write it or you know uh put it on a notepad or you know put it on your um on your phone whatever right you already written down is it yeah yeah okay okay maybe you can look at okay god what are some areas that you want me to focus okay um that should help us right what are some areas that you want me to focus what are some things to be built what are some things to be broken you know whatever right change personally and uh, and look look at that you know look at uh, and be be free to dream right so don't be afraid because many times we are uh, scared yes we scared. many times we have, we we've not god wants us to dream god wants us to dream big but we we look at limitations we look at you know maybe expectations of people whatever you know disappointments we look at the past experience of the past and we say okay it's okay <laughs> you know i'll just get by today today what i can do yeah obviously you know we we have pressures to do certain things today that will always be there but let's pull back you know zoom out and uh, see what is it for you know whatever time frame that you think right okay we're just going to take uh, Five minutes to do that. Okay, online students also same thing. Okay, just um, let's do that.
Um, and in the meantime, I can just put this for us. You can go okay. through. Um, No, uh, you you said you've already written it. So you think of the years ahead, after twenty twenty five. Yeah, yeah. What you would like to do, and you know, we looked at those areas, right? We looked at okay, you know, in terms of uh, ministry, personally, financially, right? Uh, I know these things are interlinked, but you just put down. Okay, what God is putting in your heart, just write down, right? Yeah. Okay.
Okay, any progress? <laughs> Anything filled out or uh, <laughs> not yet? Sorry, what? In progress. Okay, yeah. So we can put down life goals. You know, this is um, you know where I'd like to be. This is what I want to be. There's nothing wrong. Like right? nothing wrong in doing that. And um, yeah, allow God to lead us into all these areas, right? Okay. Um, and then we realize that okay, our own mind is uh, you know limiting, limiting us, right? Um, and and many times, what comes to our mind is okay, it cannot be done, or you know, there's, there's a lot of negativity that comes, right? It's, it's not like. Um, I don't know, you know, many times it, it happens, but we just need to push past that. Push past that negativity, push past that, uh, you know, and then uh, begin to look at it the way God would see it. You know, God has a dream for us, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, and he's, <laughs> and he's uh, the Bible declares that he rejoices over us with singing. So he has a plan, you know, just like how, you know, when you're a parent, you realize that you, you want good things for your child. You, know, you want your child to flourish, um, go further than you had ever gone, and be better at things. And so, same way, our heavenly Father, you know, has those dreams for us. Right? So, so we just need to think that way. You know, so I get God's God's perspective, okay, about my life, about my family, about you know all these things. You know, what is your plan, God? You know, what is your because you have these good things, right? So, uh, help me and and put it together so that you know every every now and then we can look at it maybe end of a year or end of that time frame look at it and say okay now here is where i need to make adjustments here is where you know maybe i kind of slow down you know on this or i lost fire for this or i got distracted now maybe i need to make those course corrections and keep going okay okay um so uh, I just uh, I just shift things a bit and go into the next section, which is about uh, winning with people. It's about people. When it comes to leadership, when it comes to ministry, um, we see that uh, it is about people. Right? <laughs> Sorry. Um, like we. Like we looked at the scripture today about the scribe, sorry, the scribe going to the Lord Jesus and asking, okay, God, what is this? What is the great commandment? The Lord gives two, right? Two statements. One is, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second one is to love others. Love others as yourself. Right? Loving God, loving people. So, we see that in a nutshell, in a nutshell, that is that is what life and ministry is. If you look at it, you just you know brought it all together in that one one or two verses. Loving God, loving people. Okay, so when we look at you know leadership, leadership in ministry, it's about this, right? Loving God, loving people. So, well, loving God is easy. Because he never changes, right? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Loving God is good because uh, you know he's a good God. We can trust him. You know. But loving people, on the other hand, is is a challenge. What 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 do you say? It's it it is difficult. It is a challenge, right? Because um, you know for how people are, right? And we forget that we are also one such big person. <laughs> You know, we are also part of that group called people, right? So, yeah. So, leadership involves people. Ministry involves people. And when we say people, you know, then obviously there is a connect or relationship, right? So, as a as a leader, if I need to lead people, then I need to establish a relationship. And if I want to be an you know leader, we said it's a, a leader is a someone who has a you know who, who Influences people for their good, right? Who influences people for their good, uh, the good of the for themselves and good of the you know the cause of 
the ministry or whatever you're leading right so um so that's 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 the basis for you know us um when it comes to relating to people so we need to understand that yes ministry will involve people leadership will involve people okay so i as a leader i need to maybe grow in my understanding of people right grow in my knowledge of how can i relate to people better right and so how can i win with people and how can it be a win situation for them and how can it be a win for me as well you know as a person who's leading right it cannot be just a winning scenario just for me as a leader you know let's say a formal relationship like work scenario you know formal leader uh, you know established you know your role is a formal role as a leader so it cannot be just a win for you in a sense i've reached you know the company has reached this goal we have got this profit and then what about the people right is it a win for them also Are, have they also achieved some objectives for themselves right have they also benefited in terms of remuneration financially and and all that right so um you know some of this what are we, what are we sharing okay yeah I have a question okay so what are we sharing is from this book by john c back john c maxwell uh, winning with people how many of you have read any of any books by john c maxwell leadership um no i think uh, it, it's a must read right probably i'll share that also some pdfs by john c maxwell john c maxwell started off as a pastor and uh, and a pastor of a big you know quite a big church actually and then he felt the calling to the workplace right so he uh, especially when it comes to leadership and so on so he started this whole ministry called enjoy i n j o y enjoy ministries and all about leadership right from a christian biblical perspective right so whatever he's he puts out as leadership material is from a very strong biblical christian standpoint right and 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 some very good stuff you know very very good material um both in terms of management principles and leadership principles and so on so his his book 21 i think 21 steps to leadership i forget the name of the title but you know uh, it's a it's a must read for you know all of us so he's written on teamwork also okay so uh, you know some of these things that we can look at okay that is uh, how do we get ready to relate to people right uh, focusing on others building trust nurturing relationships and creating win win situations or relationships where everybody is benefited okay so uh, we'll go through that in the coming classes your question uh, you had a yeah no yeah, good Mm. Um, how we can do it when it comes to like leadership that we want them to do the work. Yeah. We can't. We can win the situation by commanding them and getting our work done. We may lose the people also, but how we can make get our work done? Hmm. People were so rigid. Hmm. So we need to find out why why are they rigid why are they not performing like why are they not achieving because the thing is you know with when when i and i'm in a place um let's say i'm gainfully employed and it's not just the money right it's it's a it's a sense of achievement accomplishment satisfaction that i get from doing the job well so is it, is the job challenging enough is the task challenging enough um or am i not using my potential my skills and abilities right so these are some things that we need to look at to see why are people not performing and and therefore when when you know when when a person is all these things come together when the person is in the right place um, and they are you know they are using their skills and talents and everything in that particular thing role and it it results in a sense of achievement and accomplishment for them they are content 
then they will actually perform it's a win for them personally and it's a win for you know the leader because you are reaching your goals and it's a win for the organization because the organization goals are also met right so um, so yeah the thing is to address that why you know why is it you know maybe it's not the right person for that job for that role maybe they're not skilled enough do they have the tools to get the job done they could meant to get the job done why are they frustrated right um, so so those are some things that we need to address to create a win-win situation yeah okay so thank you um, we'll catch up again next class bye bye